So, you boarded and took over a Crimson Fleet haunt to do some haunting of your own, eh? I wouldn't. It's a pretty lame ship, and you need something better. Let's see why. I'm good guys free. Here's a haunt I captured and landed at Red Mile. Looking from the outside, it reminds me of a fish. Let's go in. Being a Teo based ship, it has the Teo Shipbed 200 landing bay pointing backwards. First reason to dislike it, but that's probably just my personal taste. From the landing bay, we reach a Teo Companionway 1x1, the mid variant. Nothing special here. Yeah, Sarah, don't tell me what to do. Looking around. Going up the ladder, we find ourselves in a Teo Control Station 2x1, the top A variant. No, Cora, don't go into the cockpit. I'm here for you. Should you need me? Ooh, Andresia, I'll take you up on this, I promise. Back here, we see the Teo Extender Port 200 Docker with its ladder. Turning back, we walk into the samurai cockpit, where you can see the two decorative dead pirates on the floor and the oblivious Sam Ko and his daughter Cora. Let's dig into the structure a bit more carefully. We'll start by taking a look around the in the ship builder, and then begin disassembling the ship. So it's a very small ship, with only two weapon types attached, which makes sense with the 16 power reactor. It has a max crew of three, pretty small cargo, only 390 kilograms, and a short grav range of only 22 light years. However, it has a top speed of 150 and a 95 mobility, making it a very agile and nimble in a fight. Let's break it down, starting with the engines and reactor. We can see it has two Panoptes Ares DT40 engines mounted on the sides of the grav drive. Let's move them out of the way. We have a single Ballistic Solutions Inc. 400G Helium-3 tank assembly, giving us 140 light years of jump range in segments. The grav drive is a Reladyne R1000 Alpha, using 9 power, giving a jump thrust of 16. It is a pretty okay grav drive for a Class A, but you generally want to have a grav range of at least 26 light years. Here, we see the Teo Pinpoint 4G Plus landing gear, with a lander thrust of 2. The reactor is a Xiang Tokamak X050 A-Class reactor generating 16 power. Its stats are well-rounded for what you get, but if you have to stay with A-Class, I recommend the Xiang 120S. It is an A-Class reactor generating 28 power. Yes, 28. It can be purchased on Aquila in Hopetown, in the Straudeklin Staryard, and in Teo Astroneering Showroom in Ryujin Tower in Neon. Here, we see the only cargo container other than what you get with the cockpit, a Sextant Shield Systems 200cm ballast shielded cargo hold, giving you 190 kilograms of shielded cargo. The shield is another Sextant product, the Deflector SG-10 shield generator, using 3 power and producing 300 units of shield health, with a good regeneration rate. Let's move all of these pieces aside. We already mentioned the Teo Extender Port 200 docker attached here to the aft part of the control station. And here we see the Light Scythe ATL ATL 270A missile launcher. This is an okay weapon. It has a range of 4000 meters, which is less than other Class A missile launchers. It has nearly 50 damage per second for both shields and hull. Taking the weapon lock time into consideration makes it the third or fourth worst Class A missile launcher in the game. Let's move these two aside. The ship has a Teo Samurai cockpit providing two crew stations and 200 kilograms of cargo. And we already talked about the Teo control station giving another four crew stations moving them aside too. Now we see the bottom layer, starting with two Teo Pinpoint 3G landing gears on each side, providing a total of six lander thrust for the entire ship with the Pinpoint 4G we saw earlier. 
The particle weapons mounted on the front landing gear hardpoints are two Horizon Defense Disruptor 3300 electron beams, each using 3 power, giving a 3.49 fire rate of 1259 damage per second shield and hull, with a 3500 meter range. It's an okay weapon again, but somewhere on the bottom of the list. Moving those aside, we see the Teo Ship Bed 200 landing bay, attached to the Teo Companionway 1x1. Notice the landing bay has a circle-in-circle -circle top connector, meaning there cannot be a ladder there. This is why we must have the Companionway, which has a circle in a rectangle, meaning it can open up with a ladder to the module on top. And in the front, we see the Teo Braking Engine, a cosmetic piece. You know what I didn't see? didn't see captain's quarters or living quarters, so I don't know why Andresia was so quick to offer... never mind. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon with more ship reviews.